All right, here, here we are again for um, Vintage Sellers uh, Beer Club video or Zoom or whatever we're all getting used to calling these things. Remote learning, I guess this is called, <laughs> which is a lot better than what the students, some of the students have to do, it seems like. So, anyway, we welcome in uh, Matt from um, Hopworks. <laughs> Hopworks, Dad. Hopworks. <laughs> I'm the wine guy. She's the beer guy. I don't know why she makes me do this, but anyway, from Hopworks in Portland, Oregon. Um, so kind of what, what we talked about, Matt, was just maybe tell us about your your story, how you got in the in the, in the brewing world and kind of how you ended up there. And, yeah. Yeah, go from there. Yeah, so uh, I got into brewing in college. I uh, started home brewing. Uh, well, first I was drinking a lot of uh, like cheap domestic beer or uh, and and then somebody handed me a craft beer and I got really excited. I was like, this is amazing. This beer has got more flavor in it and I'm getting a buzz before I have to go to the bathroom. So that was really cool. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I started home brewing and uh, I got to the point where I was like, wow, this is a lot of fun. Uh, I wonder what this would be like to turn it into a career. So uh, I was looking around, I was going to school in Pennsylvania and I mean, Portland was like one of the hubs for craft beer uh, back there in the in the mid 2000s. So I packed up, uh, moved out west, uh, hit the streets for a long time trying to find a job because uh, apparently a lot of people really want to get into making beer as well. So there are fewer opportunities and I was probably stopping by at least once a month for three or four months while Christian was working on the building. So I'd be coming by seeing the progress that would be happening and uh, yeah, uh, when he said that they were going to be opening up with the pub, uh, I had plenty of restaurant experience from back in college. So I started working out in the pub. And uh, in three months, I started in March of 2008. In three months, I was down in the brewery uh, part time. So working, scrubbing keg shells, doing grunt work three days a week, and then managing up in the restaurant two days a week as I was going to uh, the American Brewers. Group. It's just a, like a secondary education for uh, for people who want to get into beer that don't have a like a four year degree or the fermentation science program. So I was going through school, scrubbing keg shells, and uh, I just busted my ass and uh, moved my way through. And I've done uh, quite literally everything in the brewery in in that time. So I was actually the first person to fill out an application when Hopworks opened that up. Uh, just over 12 and a half years ago and I've, I've been here ever since so cool yeah that's that's a fun story yeah I think it's interesting that you didn't you know see your life heading that direction necessarily until you tasted a beer because yeah. I have a similar story in wine you know I was same thing I was in a whole different industry and all of a sudden I wow this is life-changing so it's fun to, everybody has those stories if you're in this business and you're passionate about it it seems like it's gonna be, so tell us about Hopworks and and kind of the story of that brewery too. Yeah, so uh, we are a sustainably focused brewery in uh, Southeast Portland, Oregon. Uh, we are a B corporation, uh, which is a chemical corporation. So uh, a lot of what we're trying to do with, uh, with our whole business model is to uh, take care of people, the planet, and uh, be profitable. So it's a, a third party, um, uh, audited group. So we have to go through a, a recertification every single year. Uh, so that's a big thing. We're also a salmon safe brewery. Uh, the site that uh, we brew on, uh, we do everything that we can to prevent uh, any uh, negative aspects of the brewing process because there's a, a huge water impact uh, to make beer. So everything that we do that goes out the door, we're making sure that uh, when it hits the sewer system, it is not going to be negatively affecting the city or just our, our beautiful rivers and streams. Um, and then, yeah, we've, uh, we try and have as much uh, organics as we can in our beers. Uh, the tree frog that we're sipping on right now is a 100% organic beer. Uh, same with the Golden Hammer, uh, it's a Munich style Hellas. But yeah, uh, just protecting our planet and trying to use uh, beer as a force for good for uh, having, having that platform and that ability to have a positive impact on uh, our community and environment. 
in my early twenties, uh, beer was not a not a uh, something that was good in my world. But <laughs> I've learned to I've learned to tame that down. But yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us about um, your role now, currently in the brewery. Yeah. So um, now I'm the uh, the head brewer. Uh, Christian is the owner brewmaster. Um, and my, my day to day is, uh, writing recipes, sourcing ingredients, uh, making sure that all of the higher level things that we're talking about are getting executed down on the brewery floor. Um, throwing my boots on when I need to, to help out with, uh, filtering beer or other projects that are happening. Um, it's kind of part admin and part, uh, like boots on the grounds, getting dirty, uh, but uh, I, I've got some really good people working down there in the brewery, so thankfully I don't have to spend too much time down there, and I can focus more on uh, coming up with some good recipes and sourcing locally uh, for for our beers. Yeah. So, thank you. Um, we went. We actually went to an urban winery in, called Willful, which I don't know if you saw my email, but yeah. um, is that similar to what you guys are doing? I don't know if you're familiar familiar with. Willful, but they share a brewing space with several other wineries. Winery space, right. Um, and so is that what you guys mean by that? You're kind of sharing yeah. a space and doing that? Or? Uh, so by Urban Brewery, we are located uh, within the Portland city limits. Okay. Um, and uh, Hopworks Urban Brewery Hub uh, was a nice little acronym for uh, Christian, the owner, because uh, he's a really big cyclist. So that was that sort of tie-in with that. But uh, yeah, we're located right in Portland. So, uh, but I mean, a lot of a lot of breweries are are urban in that sense. Yeah, but we don't uh, we don't share a space with uh, another brewery or anything like that. How many cases are? I don't know how like how many um, how big are you guys? Are you in how many states? Yeah. And so uh, we brew on a twenty barrel system. A barrel is thirty one gallons. So uh, our yearly output is right around 8,000 barrels, 10,000 barrels, depending on the year. So yeah, we're just cranking through as much beer as we possibly can, um, as sustainably as we can. But yeah, it's uh, about 10,000 barrels a year, give or take. This year might be a little under just because of COVID, but yeah. Right. Well, should we start on the beers? I don't know what, what order you guys have chosen, but do you want to kind of start talking about the beers? I do. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great place to start. Okay. Let me let me pour myself one as well. I know. <laughs> we we um, we're doing some education classes around here with our staff, and um, we learned about wit beers yesterday. Oh, right on. Yeah, uh, I think wit beer is a, a really fantastic style. Cheers, if you're both ready there. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> um came out of uh, Belgium. Uh, it's a light wheat-based beer, low alcohol, and it's often spiced. And the main spices that uh, breweries will often use are uh, coriander and orange peel. Uh, so we keep this one pretty traditional in that sense. Uh, it's basically all base malt with uh, a huge load of wheat and some acidulated malt just to change the pH on that beer a little bit. We lower it, it helps give it that nice little like snappy quality to it. And uh, the, it's basically not hops. It's got a, a really, really small hop addition right at the beginning. The, the bitterness on it is like five or 10 or something like that. It's, it's very, very low. So it's the perfect sort of thing to just like slam down when you're mowing the lawn. It's like 4.9% alcohol too. So real easy drinker, yeah. Nice, yeah, it's fun. I think maybe a really light cheese with that too would be, you know, something yeah. as a pairing, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Nothing real complex, you know? Yeah, uh, the other cool thing about this beer is that it contains uh, Kernza, which is a perennial wheatgrass that has been uh, developed by Patagonia Provisions. So uh, it's it does a great job for uh, reducing the amount of uh, planting because it's a perennial crop. It's got a huge root structure, so it helps eliminate the uh, uh, erosion. And it also holds a lot of uh, carbon dioxide in that root structure because of this. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool partnership with uh, Patagonia Provisions there. All right, let's move on to Tree Frog. Tree Frog. Yeah. 
Street Profit, absolutely. Which we have at the beginning, but we'll yeah. revisit it. We can go back to it, that's great. Um, Tree Frog is one of my favorites. It's a American style pale ale. So it's going to be uh, hoppy, but not too hoppy. It's got just a little splash of uh, caramel 60 in there, but it's basically just base malt with that little splash of color in there. Uh, the hops that we're using are uh, Amarillo and Citra. Those are the, the main driving hops for it. So it's got that really nice uh, citrusy, uh, lighter, fruity quality to it. Yeah, it's nice. I think that's another one very refreshing, not overpowering your mouth, right? Yeah, and at, uh, five, four, I believe is uh, is what that one comes in at. Okay. Uh, another super easy drinker. Right. Who we got next? Should we, do you want to do the lager next? Yeah, okay. yeah, we can do the Golden Hammer. That's a great one. Um, yeah, Golden Hammer. It's a uh, Munich style Hellas. The what style, sorry? Munich style, Munich, so okay. coming from uh, Germany. Right. Uh, it is uh, two row malts and some Pilsner malt coming from Germany, as well as some acidulated malt coming from Germany. So uh, we tried to incorporate uh, as much of the traditional ingredients as we possibly could. Uh, and it's really nice, light, honey-like sort of a quality. The, the hops that we use are Perlas and they're uh, like derived from an old world hop uh, uh, noble hops, they're called. So they have that uh, floral, spicy quality to them. They're really low on bitterness. Um, but yeah, this is supposed to be just a, a very balanced beer with a nice malt flavor without being heavy. I think that, that describes it perfectly. What's your best selling beer? Um, goodness, right now, right now it's our best selling beer. Uh, our, our seasonal beers tend to be our best sellers. Um, we are just coming out of the totally chill season and we're going into the abominable winter ale season. And then in the springtime, we have the Juicy Bear. So those ones always seem to be like just out in front of everything else, but the, uh, the Pal de Owl, the IPA, and uh, the Robot Panda, which I believe that we're gonna taste as well. Those two have been doing very well for us. Um, and then uh, Tree Frog and Golden Hammer are just behind in that mix. But, you know, uh, Portland is a very uh, hop focused sort of a town. So the, right. the hop beers tend to garner a little more excitement. All right. Yeah. What about all the names and the logos and tell us the story of that? Yeah, one. so, uh, all of our uh, main core beers, uh, that art is done by uh, Martin Untenburst, and he's a local uh, Portland artist. And he specializes in like, like these monsters. And we first teamed up with him when we did our Abominable Winter Ale. Uh, mm. So he made a, a great uh, A-bomb head for us. And ever since then, we were just really pumped and we just brought him in to do more and more uh, labels. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, we just kind of want something that's uh, kind of recognizable, but also kind of uh, weird and unique. Like the Golden Hammer, it's, uh, it's a goat, but it's got four eyes. Uh, the Tree Frog has got the, the can lids for the eyes on it. Yeah. And then uh, just Pal the Owl is, it, it's very like Halloween-y and, uh, and kind of cool in that sense. And the Robot Panda is it's it's a robot panda just a massive robot so uh the names i don't know sometimes they uh, just something strikes you and you're like oh that's the the perfect name or, or sometimes you have the beer first and then you're trying to struggle to come up with the name uh i i couldn't say exactly exactly which comes first in every situation but uh, the brewery is located on Powell Boulevard, so the Powell the Owl is named after the, the road that we're on. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Would you recommend doing Robot Panda next or Powell Owl? Uh, let's do Robot Panda first because the okay. Powell is a little bit more bitter. So we had in our restaurant, we had Robot Panda, Abominable Snowman, and or what was that? And then Gear Up. Yeah. And we did really well with them. Yeah, the, uh, the Gear Up is a beer that we no longer make anymore, but 
uh, with the Powell IPA, we tried to take some of those elements that people really liked from that beer and put that into the Powell. Mm -hmm. And we've recently been kind of upping the, the hops on that just a little bit. We've been throwing some uh, Cryo Idaho 7 hops. And uh, with a, a Cryo hop, they're literally like freezing the hop cone so that you knock off more of the vegetal material because all the, the lupulin glands from the hop is located uh, at the center of the cone. So when you knock off the outside, you get less of that vegetal material and more of the actual glands that you want for the, those uh, fruity uh, flavors and aromas and the bitterness. So uh, that you can use at a really nice rate. It just helps like lift those hops up even higher. So uh, we're, we're really excited about what we're doing with the Powell. Do you guys have your own, I, I saw in the email you mentioned something about the hops. Are they coming in right now? Or? Yeah, so, well, actually right now, uh, everything is a little bit on hold because of the fires that are burning in Oregon. Uh, a lot of the hop farms down in Willamette Valley, uh, they're kind of waiting to get an evacuation notice. So they've sort of hit pause on uh, harvesting some of those hops. So I'm, I'm really hoping that they're able to get through the hop harvest and uh, next year's crop or the hops, they get processed and come out uh, in 2021. So when they come out at that time, I'm hoping that, you know, they, they have the full yield. I mean, farming is a, it's a, a tough business. And when uh, your margins are slim and you're at the whim of uh, the weather, uh, it can be tough. So we're, we're really hoping for everything to, to pull through well, but, but yeah, right now is, hop harvest time and uh, we drove down to uh, Goshi Farms, which is just down in uh, uh, Silverton area in Oregon. And uh, they are a salmon safe certified uh, facility as well. So all everything that they do in regards to uh, pest maintenance and everything is uh, done in a way that would help protect and preserve uh, the rivers. So we, we like teaming up with them a lot. Well, did we talk about this yet? We didn't, no. right? The robot panda? Yeah, so uh, Robot Panda is a uh, hazy pale ale. You can see, especially compared to the uh, Golden mm -hmm. Hammer, like very opaque. Um, and a lot of that is coming from uh, what we're doing in the mash, the grains that we're using. So we'll be using uh, lots of wheat. Wheat will help throw some of that haze. We'll use some unmalted grains because that will help do the same thing. Uh, and we're normally mashing in at a, a higher temperature so that builds uh, body. It doesn't allow the beer to ferment the whole way out. So you end up with this really like silky smooth uh, mouthfeel on the beer. And then the hops that we're using in this are uh, Cascade, Sultana and Mosaic. So the Sultana Mosaic combo gives it a really like tropical fruity, almost like a, a papaya or a mango with a little bit of like a, a tangerine in there as well. Uh, so this one does really well, and it's also a really great beer for uh, people that are not necessarily beer drinkers because hops have all the flavor, and when you're making the hazies, they have less of the bitterness. I feel like the bitterness is sometimes hard for people to uh, get past when they're first getting into beer, so the, the hazies are a great way for to sort of dip their toe in the water with an IPA. Nice. Do you have a preference between hazy or um, an IPA? Personally, I kind of like my clear beers. So I, I kind of like the, the West Coast style uh, IPA a little bit more than the hazies. Uh, that's not to say that I dislike the hazies because they're delicious. Like the, the whole process that you go through with that, uh, it kind of makes all of those hop notes a little more soft and subtle and, and the, the, the more delicate fruity notes can really come out uh, sometimes a little bit stronger in those, which I really like, but because they they have that like sweetness that's built in, uh, sometimes when I get to like my third or fourth, I start to feel a little full. So it's nice to switch over to a, a West Coast style IPA. Okay. Yeah. So about the Golden Hammer, or no, no, I'm sorry. What went the Powell Owl? Powell, sorry. Powell. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so this is our, our flagship IPA. Um, it is all base malt with just a little, little splash of wheat. Um, but yeah, filtered, nice, bright and clear, uh, really traditional with, excuse me, with a lot of those hop notes, uh, little, little piney, little citrusy, uh, a little like 
dank and resinous. Uh, a lot of that, the cryo Idaho 7 hop is really coming through with that. It also has some Chinook in there uh, and some Amarillos. So it's, it, it's a great go-to IPA. And a little rosemary hint to me on the, on the palate. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely get uh, some of those notes as well. And this is our last one? Uh, Midnight yeah. snack. So, so apparently it's not just pizza anymore. No. <laughs> well, what goes better with pizza than beer? Yeah, exactly, so. that's true. Somebody asked me today what I would pair, pair with something. I'm like, and they wanted a wine answer, obviously. And I said, it's a beer, man. The answer's a beer. You can't always have a wine. You can't always have a beer, but. You know, yeah, you got to be, you got to be uh, flexible. Yeah. So uh, midnight snack on this one, uh, really dark, really strong. It's uh, nine, just over nine percent, nine point two, I believe. Oh really? Um, wow. It's got uh, some uh, Vienna malts. It's got some chocolate and black malts in there. It also has lactose. So uh, lactose is a, a milk derived sugar, but it's unfermentable by brewer's yeast. So there's a lot of that uh, sweetness and body is coming from the lactose that we add in there. So wow. that I like is, that a lot. That is a midnight snack. I agree <laughs> with that. And then we also had uh, chocolate and in there. So it's, uh, it's, it's just a thick, rich, hearty beer. Uh, I mean, a great thing for a dark beer drinker. So it's a good winter beer, a Montana winter. Montana is probably a little bit colder. Not probably, it's for sure a little bit colder than the Oregon winters. So. Oh yeah, it definitely. This will it's warm me up a little bit. It's always funny. funny. Have you been to Montana? Uh, yeah, I have. I've uh, hiked through Glacier a couple times. I've uh, driven across the state a couple times. Uh, Billings, Bozeman, uh, rolling through. Uh, it's it's a gorgeous state, but like right. the, that area. Uh, like Kalispell and uh, uh, Glacier Park. I just, I love getting out and back. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great state for the outdoors. So every time I have a winemaker on one of these Zoom calls, I make them pick their favorite beer because they all tell me it takes a lot of beer to make a good wine. So I always like to ask uh, brew, brew guys, when, you, when, you, when you're just tired of beer and you want to have a glass of wine, what, what do you have? Um, for me, I, I don't know if, if you'll like this answer or not, but I like, uh, I, I like Prosecco. <laughs> I do too, yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I want, I want my, my alcohol cold and bubbly. So, so that, that's the, the perfect thing for me, which is not to say that I don't like, you know, a, a Pinot Noir or something like that. But just, right. I, I want something that's like a little bit lighter and cold. So the like Prosecco or uh, like a, 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 a Pinot Grigio or something like that that was served a little cold. It's just <laughs> you need to understand. Coming yeah. To no, yeah. I'm I'm right on board with you. I drink probably more white and more rosé than I do red anymore. So yeah, I get I get where you're coming from. I think maybe our palates all develop over time for beer and wine and mm -hmm. even cocktails and whatever. You know, I think over time it just you, you figure out what you like and and then you go in and out. Anyway, thank you so much. Anything else that you want to add? Or? Um, no, I, we, we love Montana. And uh, thank you so much for supporting Hopworks. Yeah. And, uh, we'll, we'll keep the beer coming. Let us, uh, we'll let you know what's coming up. All right. It was nice thank to meet you. you. Yeah, virtually. thank you for staying or yeah. joining us. We yeah. appreciate it much. Absolutely. Cheers. 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 C